Welcome. Today I'm going to share with you my techniques for building a simple Flash application with an existing comp. We created a simple background in Fire, Fireworks and we're going to be creating files in ActionScript 2.0. ActionScript 2.0 is basically the best tool for web development at this time. ActionScript 3.0 is more for flex applications, air applications, and more advanced programming. Highly suggest if you want to do web development applications for the time being, ActionScript 2.0 is totally suitable and works fine. I'm working with CS5. The first thing I want to cover here is I'm working in classic mode. Why classic mode? Classic mode is much simpler to comprehend and a little less overwhelming. So classic mode, now if you don't have your default classic mode up, you can actually reset classic mode. So I'm gonna, okay, so moving forward, just again, make sure you work in classic mode, classic workspace. Now, if you have to, go ahead and reset that so it resets back to default. The only change I'm going to make here is after I make myself a new document, I'm going to make a new ActionScript 2 document. Why well, ActionScript 2? For web development, ActionScript 2 is still the industry standard. ActionScript 3 is for doing more advanced things like applications, Flex applications, Apollo Air applications, work with XML. ActionScript 2.0 basically solves a lot of web solution problems. So I'm just going to make an ActionScript 2.0 file. Then next I'm going to save the file. So I saved the file as Flash inside my uh, Flash folder. Now, before we go further here, I just want to make some changes here. I'm going to go to my window menu and bring up the Actions palette. Now, this is not part of my standard classic mode. I'm just going to take this Actions palette and dock it up to here. So now it reads Timeline, Motion Editor, and Actions. Now, for today's class, we're not going to go into this Motion Editor, so I'm just going to dis not use that to make it less confusing. So basically, I have action panel and timeline. So here's how I'm going to get started by building my layers. I'm going to have a total of five layers. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to be my actions layer. Next will be my nav, navigation. Then this is going to be my intro animation. And if I can learn how to spell, it would certainly help. Then this is going to be sections. And this is going to be called comp or background. In this particular case, I'm bringing in a file from Fireworks. Make a change, save a change. Now, important step here. I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel every time. Every time I make a new file, I don't want to have to make these basic bread and butter layers. And if I could learn how to spell animation, Okay. So, the first thing I do when you make your first Flash file is I'm going to go to File, Save It as Template. And it's simply going to save this as a template. So, the template, we're going to call it Basic Flash AS2 Layers. And we're going to put this in a category called Basic Flash. And you can write yourself a description. And I'm going to hit Save. Now, how is this going to help me? Well, how this is going to help me is next time I go to make a new file, I'm not going to make a new file from scratch. I'm going to make a new file from the template file I just created under the category basic flash. So there's my basic flash file. That's production techniques are key to developing good document habits. So again, once you have your basic layer set up, go ahead and save that as a template so the next time you make a new file, you make a new file from that template. Now what can you put inside your template? You can put uh, logos from your client. You can have a specific height and width, etc, etc. In this particular case, I'm just going basic bread and butter template with simply five layers. Now the first keyboard shortcut I'm going to share with you is Command J, which is Page Properties. Page Properties Command J. Now, before I go into this, we're going to change the stage to match the size of our background comp. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this layer, this keyframe layer from the File Menu, File Import, Command R. We're going to select this comp here I created inside of Fireworks and open the comp. Now it's going to ask me a few questions here. 
we're going to basically bring this in as a movie clip. We want to keep the past editable in case we need to make changes, and we're going to keep the text editable. Now, this comp doesn't have text, but if it did, you could basically change the text in case you made a typo mistake or you need to add to the text. So I'm simply going to hit OK. That's going to put it on this layer called comp. Now, our stage, our stage is not the size of our comp. So how do we change the stage? Command J, page properties, we're going to change this to match the contents, match the contents. And this frame rate doesn't need to be 24 frames per second. We're going to change it to 10 frames per second. So Command J, basically change the comp to match the stage, the comp to match the stage. Make a change, save a change. Now, for my intro animation, this, this graphic here doesn't need to be here. So I'm going to double click and simply move this graphic and put it over here. We're going to utilize that later. So for right now, this is not going to be part of our comp. I double click inside of the movie clip, which basically put me inside of this timeline. Go back to scene one. So now this is off the stage. What I mean by that, if you go to control, test movie, commit return, I'm sorry, test, <laughs> not paying attention here, test movie, command key return, you'll see that it just shows you the stage. So it's not going to show you that graphic to the side. Okay, so let's get started building our application. The first thing we want to do, I'm going to lock this layer into place. If you're a Photoshop or Illustrator user, it makes total sense to lock layers that you're not utilizing at this point. So I'm going to lock this layer. Then I'm going to select this keyframe. Now I'll explain keyframes in detail later on. This is a plain keyframe. This is where I want my animation to start. So I simply want an animation to go across the page. So let's say this is going to be our logo. So I'm going to create a simple, simple logo to start over here to the right. And it's going to go across the page and appear. So I'm just going to create a logo with this shape here. I'm going to hold that command key. Now important step here. By default, I basically went to my rectangle tool and created a white box. I want this box not to be white. I want this box to be purple. Now, production technique here. Hold down the command key. Never see me selecting these tools up here. Similar to Illustrator, Photoshop, InDesign, Quirk Express. You can turn a tool into a selection tool simply by holding down the command key on Macintosh, the control key on Windows. So command key, click. I'm just going to select that. Now, if I hold down the command key and go to the outside here, I can basically change the path. So I'm going to change the path this, and change the path that. Now I'm basically select through here and change that to a different color. I'm going to select that. I did this by holding down the command key. Why am I holding down the command key? Because I'm in the rectangle tool. If I start drawing, I'm going to create rectangles. I don't want to create rectangles. I want to select. So I hold down the command key. So we're going to pick this section here. We can make that green. Green's a good contrast to purple. So then I'm going to go to my oval tool, which is the letter O, and I'm going to create an oval right here. And I'm going to make the oval, let's make the oval black. Okay, so this is going to be our simple, our simple logo that's going to go across the page and end up over here. Now, because the layer is locked, I can either command key select or command A to select all and turn this to a symbol. Now, important step here, we need to convert this to a symbol. There are three different types of symbols. The shortcut for symbol is F8. F key 8 converts to symbol. So we're going to make this a graphic symbol. There's three different types of symbols. There's graphic symbol, movie clip symbol, and button symbol. This is simply going to be a graphic symbol. So we're going to change the name to G R capital L O G O. The capital is just camel casing. So this way I can see that it's a logo. Graphic logo, change it to a graphic. If I resize the graphic, I want to resize it from the top left hand corner. So I simply hit OK. Now, where did they put that graphic? They put the graph inside the library, window library, or command 
L, Control L for Windows. So here's my library items. So if this if this symbol was not on the stage, I can take it from the library and drag it to the stage. I'm just gonna position this right here. So here's our objective. I want this to simply go across the stage and end up over here. I want this to happen in one second. We're at 10 frames per second, so it's gonna take a total of 10 frames for this to appear from the right to the left. So here's my technique for doing this. I first of all select the keyframe, hold it on the control key on Macintosh or right click on Windows. We're gonna create a very important step here, classic tween, not motion tween, classic tween. So this, this is gonna tell Flash to basically move this graphic from point A to point B. So the second place we want this to be is right here. So I'm gonna select this frame and hit F6. F6 inserts a keyframe. F6 inserts a keyframe. Now you'll say, what happened to my comp? Well, the comp is in frame one. We want the comp to be as far as frame 50, actually 60. So I'm gonna select frame 60 and extend the frames by inserting a frame, not a keyframe, a frame. F5 inserts a frame. So now the comp will be throughout our application from frame one to frame 60. So at frame 10, there's no movement because I haven't changed this. So I hold that in the command key, I move this to the far left. So this is where it's gonna stop, make a change, save a change. So if you scrub this here, what Flash did, Flash created the tween from point A to point B, from point A to point B. Okay, so at this point I wanna test the movie. What do I mean by that? Flash needs to create a Swift file. Swift file stands for Shockwave Flash. The Swift file is a file that goes on the internet. The Swift file is a file that gets published inside your Dreamweaver document. So I can simply hit Command Return, Control, Test Movie, Command Return. This is gonna create the Swift file. Now, notice what happens here. It moves across the page. It moves across the page, then it disappears. Why does it disappear? Because it only goes in the frame 10. So we're gonna basically correct this issue by installing some action script. We're gonna put an action script right here. This is where we want the stop action to happen. So if you're making a change, very important step here, if you're making a change to your timeline, you have to put a keyframe. How do I insert a keyframe? I'm gonna physically select here and hit F6. F6 inserts a keyframe, make a change, save a change. So I want to put a keyframe here because I want to tell the playback head to stop at this point. We'll continue on to our next video.